Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0.25. In the previous episode I launched this prospective station for Duna. It's got plenty of uh, supplies, food, water and oxygen. It's got its little transfer stage and uh, well it's definitely gonna fulfill the contract that we are supposed to fulfill with uh, building a new orbital station around Duna. It's got six Kerbals inside but with six Kerbals inside I think I shouldn't be sending it alone, right? I should probably send some some other things with it. Uh, I think uh, we had a little uh, rescue craft or uh, or um, yeah, a rescue ship that uses this same pod, and maybe that's something we should send over to Duna as well to make sure that these guys do have a way to get back home, for instance. Um, but first of all, I need to worry about the Kerbitat because uh, here we see our life support monitoring system and the Kerbitat only has nine days worth of food, water, and oxygen left. So let's let's launch some supplies over to the Kerbitat first and then also launch some other stuff to Duna. The transfer window to Duna will probably be at least a few more days. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'd say that we probably launched at a higher than 45 degree angle. So we've probably got a few more days where uh, meeting up with Duna wouldn't be uh, too much of a cost in terms of Delta V. So we can hold off on on doing the further Duna launches until we get those supplies to the moon. Alright, so that is the first plan. Let's turn to the VAB. Alright, so here's our supply lander atop the Sparrow. The Sparrow, of course, the rocket that I designed specifically to transfer this sort of thing over to the moon. And uh, the, the Sparrow has, well, let's just put a pod and see. The Sparrow has 232 days worth of supplies for a single Kerbal. So that's fine. And otherwise, reaction wheel, probe core, batteries, solar panels, as you can see. And about 2,000 Delta V. And that's mainly so that I can make sure I do the pinpoint landing and everything. Uh, I don't want to take any chances with these supplies. I don't want to have to do this a second time. Otherwise, uh, the transfer stage is like before. I'm not too sure if I want to try and return... Well, here it goes again. Uh, return the Sparrow stage, uh, even though I've got the lander legs and everything. Uh, because the Sparrow stage... The, these engines... Apparently, somebody mentioned that the heat tolerance scales with the, with the scale, with tweak scale. And so since I've tweak scaled these LVT-30s down, their heat tolerance has also been scaled down. And with deadly re-entry installed, that sure makes things a little bit dicier for using those. Aside from the fact that they keep sort of having their attachment node issue. But yeah, I'll think about that. We're sort of in a hurry. I've got a lot to do in this episode. So maybe this time won't be the time to try and do re-entry tests with that. Those take time. Um, yeah, each time I try and re-enter a stage, it takes a bundle of time here. Oh, uh, we've got a little bit sticking out. Can we get some extra radius on that? Yeah, okay. Alright, so uh, that will be our supply lander. Oh, I forgot one very important thing. Can't forget... Well, I could forget this, but I might as well not. Radio connector port, because we need to be able to feed this... Well, we don't need two of them. We need to be able to feed the supplies back into the base, right? And we should add... I, mean, I don't think I need to add anything else. Hmm. We'll have to get pretty close, though. Maybe I, no, I don't have a radial winch, do I? I've got these uh, inline ones. Not a radial one. Okay, and those are heavy anyway. That'll throw the balance off quite a lot. Oh, uh, I did add uh, some parts to the container on the base module. So I, I think we have, I hope I have some winches and uh, connector ports and everything. Hmm. Yep, uh, that would be bad if I don't. Maybe I should add a horizontal stack winch to this just in case. doesn't really matter if it even topples over or anything like that. Oh, clearance is a little bit tight there. Now I can't put the landing legs any lower and I don't want to add parts to do that. We'll just add it on top.
And that's just in case for some silly reason I forgot to add a winch to the to the pack. I know I added the connector ports, but not entirely sure about the winch. Okay. I think we are configured to go here. You save and launch. Okay, it keeps reminding us that the Kerbatat is running out of food, water, and oxygen, so at the very least we are going to try and get rid of that message. Alright, uh, here we go. Let's say us on, throttle up, and to the moon! We're at the launch capacity for this rocket, so its thrust weight ratio is pretty low. Okay, nice cloud layer today. Very nice look at things. Should really do an expedition to that mountain at some point. Just for the heck of it. Yep, the the little ones are already experiencing overheating for no apparent reason. And this isn't even a re-entry. Oh, it should drop, drop the fairings, yeah. And now it's got a little bit of that wiggle we saw with the last time I used it. Didn't see it before, it's been uh, straight and true throughout the whole launch, but just a little bit of wiggle right now. Oh, now there's some uh, pogo-like oscillation or something. I don't know what that's about. Okay, well, it's close to apoapsis. Serious oscillation there. Okay, well, that's orbit. And I will uh, keep things the way they are there. Yep. Let's turn Smarty SS off. It's bound to do something weird when I go through decoupling. Okay, let's separate the mission. Okay, mission is sort of away. Could use a little bit of a boost there. Get the solar panels out. All right. Now. I guess I will try to bring this back just to see what happens. I can't resist. So, <laughs> try and touch down at one of these points. No, uh, no point in that. We have to fly over at a given altitude anyway. Okay, and of course, uh, chances are we're going to lose this anyway, but. Because I haven't made any modifications to the Sparrow, and I don't think we made it last time. Well, let's just go ahead, since it's up here. Well, that's slow enough. Okay, so let's see what happens. It's these little guys. They don't have the heat tolerance of the center engine. But then last time I think I saw them overheat and then suddenly decide not to overheat. So I don't know. Maybe they'll do that this time. Ah, uh, we're, we're falling short. I still haven't adjusted my numbers for far in terms of where I should hit the what the periapsis should be on the descent
then again, with the lower atmosphere not as soupy, maybe it's uh, it's not so far off as I think. We'll see. Yep, then it's not overheating as expected. I'm not gonna try and wiggle out of it. Nope, they did that weird thing again where they pretend to overheat but don't actually do it. Don't know what that's about. Maybe uh, so. That maybe Tweak Scale has an auto correct on that. I don't know. Well, eventually they gotta start really overheating at this temperature. But not at this temperature. But uh, we're getting there. Forget what the temperature is. Probably I'd say about 1,400 is bad. Looks like we'll pass over the mountains. Got a thick cloud layer. Of course, we saw that going up. Now, we have to make sure we don't actually destroy it. Well, frankly, if this thing destroyed a building, I'd consider it a success. Because <laughs> it'd mean that we actually got right on target, right? So it's like, uh, yeah, I'll pay for that. Uh, if it turns out that way. Okay, we see uh, 27 kilometers there. Waiting for safe parachute deployment speeds. Okay, coming through the cloud layer here. Can't quite see whether we're on the KSC grounds or not. Probably pretty close. Okay, we're good for parachutes. Landing gear. Gotta use SAS instead of uh, Smart ASS, and we'll do that once we're nice and vertical. Okay, full parachute deployments. Okay. Five meters per second is great. If I want to, I could slow us down even more. Let's wait until we're below 200 meters. We might need more battery power on this thing. We're, we were pretty close to being out of electric charge. Okay, hey, look, Sparrow, stage, returned. All nice and stable, recover vessel. Wow, that went much, much better than expected. I almost have tears in my eyes. Uh, 35,000 funds recovered, 98% uh, of the total value. Okay. Well, anyway, let's continue with our main mission. We've got Kerbals that might be starving. Well, a Kerbal that might be starving in a little bit if we don't get supplies to him. Okay, I've got our course plotted. In this case, because we're not rendezvousing with anything, it doesn't matter which direction we go around the moon. And so we're just going straight in 50 kilometers. Periapsis. So uh, here's our little craft. It's a nifty little vehicle. Obviously purpose-driven. No... Uh, no frills. Actually, one frill. Uh, I was thinking about doing... Uh, remember, we have an outstanding contract for science around the moon. And so I put an uh, antenna on it. Unfortunately, I don't have any valid ex scientific experiments. I've got a barometer, thermometer, and seismometer. Seismometer, of, of course, we can't do. Barometer won't work in orbit. Uh, uh, and I think it is in space over... Over the moon, right? Where is it? Uh, yeah, from space around the moon. And thermometer doesn't work, at least from the places. I don't know if uh, near the moon thermometer works or not. I don't think so. Okay, here we go. Ah, uh, the almighty Rockamax 487S. 
Oh, don't need to be that picky, but anyway, 51 kilometers. Okay. Our supplies are on their way to the moon. Well, with a nice scenic curbing, let's uh, let's watch it go. Okie dokie, we are here in Moon Sphere of Influence, and let's see now how much of an orbit we can get with just this stage. Oh, we can pretty much finish it off, actually. We can do the whole orbital burn without any trouble. Maybe it'll be exactly what we need, in fact. Yep, I think it's exactly what we need, what we've got left in this stage. Okay, and that's the end of that stage. Pretty good orbit with what we had left in there. And now it's just the lander. Okay, off it goes. Off it goes. There we go. All right, so now where is our target? We're gonna have to do some sort of inclination adjustment, I'm sure. Okay, that should be a good approach. So we've got two minutes to the node. Estimated burn time four minutes? I don't think so. This thing's got the same little engine as the other one did and it can go. All right, here we are. That's more like it. Now what is our... oh so it thinks we're gonna land there. Well, yeah, of course. Okay, you know what, it's not useful at all. I take it back. Uh, yeah, I, I think I know that already. Let's see. Seems like we're a bit too far south now. Okay, we're in a hover of sorts. Seems like we could go a little bit further towards him. There we go. I need to remember to increase the amount of lights I allow for here. Well, this is the part all the Delta V was for. Just have to see what's really going on here. I mean, we're close, obviously. Okay, we're gonna land right on the light tower like this. Okay, I think we're pretty good. Yeah, our Lander's lights just got uh, just decided to overwhelm the base lights. Which is fine. I sort of want that. Gives me a better indication of what's happening here. Well, we're landing a bit too close to the base. Hold on. Oop, a bit of a hop. Okay, we're down. And precision landing, 7.2 meters away from the habitat. Take that. That's something, isn't it? Okay, let's get the lights off, because otherwise we're going to have all sorts of problems. There we go. The base lights gets to get uh, priority here. Okay. Well, uh, let's have... Uh, John Gas Kerman do his thing. He's got to get his food. Now. EVA for me, John Gas. Where are you? Ah, there you are. Okay. Great. Well, he's going to flop at some point anyway. Oh, I, I really should retract those landing gear, but. 
let's not do that right now because we've got other things. And now I wanted to check the container here. Uh, hmm. Or maybe, no, no, I think it might be the other one that has the stuff in. Yep, definitely should deploy stuff. Um, no, I think it is the Curvitat. Too far away. Let me see now. No, stop bumping into the thing, darn it. Oh, wow. Whoa. Shoosh. Tell you what, uh, can we just grab the attach? I have to figure out how to get the stuff from the container and the things, but. Could we just sort of grab the radial attachment point from the. this little thing with jig? Crap. Good job. This could create all sorts of havoc, but. I mean, the best thing to do is to attach it to this portion. Okay. Okay, can he EVA without bumping into stuff? Come on. Back off, back off. All right. Okay, we need a dock to transfer resources. Okay. All right, now. Do we need to open transfer GUI? Not like we can. Too far away, but. Yeah, let, let me just switch to the thing that's docked together, right? Now we've got those. Yes, this is what I want. Not that we really need to because we've still got this docked up and he'll get the supplies from it, but but uh, just for the sake of keeping things tight here, let's make sure that these are topped off. Okay, now back to John Gas. No, no, the other way around. Okay, there we go. Can you unplug that? Great. I'll just leave that be. As long as it's unplugged, it should be fine. <laughs> Whatever that means. Okay, but uh, mission complete. John Gas Kerman now has 155 days with supplies in the habitat and a little bit, uh, one more tank here, so probably about 75 more days left other than that. Uh, so all of our guys, he's still the one with the, uh, no, uh, the emergency habitat now has the least supplies if you count the, the stuff that's remaining in the lander in, though we would have to turn to him first to transfer that stuff into the Kerbatat. Okay, so, uh, mission successful. Precision landing, 7 meters. Wow. Okay, well that's about as close as I've ever gotten anything to anything else. So, that's, uh, there you go. Alright, now, to the VAB for, uh, for the rescue ship, the, the additional vessel that we're going to send to Duna. Here we go. This is the crew rescue and transfer vehicle for Duna. The Duna variant of, uh, you might recall this little lander that we had. But it, I've made some changes. First of all, this portion is much smaller than the version that we made to rescue Kerbals from, from who are stranded in orbit around Kerbin. So uh, that one, of course, the total Delta V there was 4,500, uh, I think it was. And I've reduced that. I've also reduced the number of engines. It's only got four of these guys, the Rocket Max 48.7Ss, of course. And uh, it only needs four because Duna does not have the same sort of pull that Kerbin does, so it's very, very powerful for Duna. No problem with that. It can uh, touch down and lift off without too much worry, I think. Of course, it's got parachutes, and that means it can probably even uh, return to 
Kerbin safely, assuming that the re-entry does not decide to get it. I don't think it would, but, uh, you know, got to be careful about those things. Uh, probably should test uh, how it re-enters before putting a Kerbal in, but we don't have a remote control unit on it, unfortunately. We don't really have a remote control unit that could be put on it safely. Uh, another difference between the Kerbin variant of the CRT is that we have a huge life support tank here and that's of course because we are sending it to Duna and thanks to that extra life support tank the three people who could be in there would have 263 days worth of supplies so very helpful and if it decides to land on Duna they could be well provisioned like that it's got ladders all the way down the side here and other than that, a little bit reconfigured so that the ladders didn't hit the landing legs and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, uh, we are going to launch it atop the Yakko Wacko Dot, so all three stages of my standard launcher for this series. And uh, the launcher is uh, barely, barely has a thrust weight ratio. I considered not having a dot stage, but I want the the CRT to have all of its fuel once it gets into orbit around Duna and perhaps uh, I wanted to allow it to get into Duna orbit without aerobraking. braking so that is another capability that I wanted and so with those possible requirements I decided that it would need the dot stage so it's a little bit heavier when it comes to getting off the ground but it's got the Delta V necessary to do everything I wanted to do Okay, we are not going to send three Kerbals in, but we do need to send one Kerbal in because otherwise, uh, well, we can't control it. Uh, so, uh, Jedin Kerman is the guy. Actually, uh, hold on a sec. Maybe we should put some science on this thing, right? Uh, it, now, I'm not planning to return the Yakko stage, by the way, so I removed all the parachutes and floats and such. Because, uh, just to save uh, cost in that case. It also saved the mass because uh, thrust weight ratio was very low. And the overall cost of this launch is pretty low as it is. But let's see now. Well, the seismometer is pretty expensive. But maybe we can at least put a thermometer on. Just one thermometer. And well, we'll put it up here. Okay so that we can do a token amount of science and I guess an antenna is advisable just in general okay I feel better about that now is this all ready to go yep let's take it out to the launch pad oh wait uh, let's make sure no waste that ah, they all snuck in again uh, okay, uh, so who do we have? Jedan Kerman, yeah. Okay, let's go. Okay, I time warped to daylight. SAS on, throttle up. And so here we go, uh, looking good on the rocket here. And get all the necessaries up and running. Ignite. And lift off. Okay, tower clear. So the CRT could uh, be used for excursions on Duna. And of course it could be used to bring Kerbals back from, from Duna orbit. But it would only be able to bring back two more Kerbals. So it can't uh, just bring back the whole station load if something were to go wrong. On the bright side, we could send another one of these pretty easily and bring two more back and do crew rotations with this. This would definitely be a crew rotation capable sort of ship. Since we're sending this over though, perhaps we should send over some more fuel. And maybe a half moo... A half moo uh, would be good. For those who don't know, there's the moo fuel depot and then the half moo fuel transfer vehicle that I've been using and so that is a a craft we can send over to carry fuel something that we have used before 
I forget what the what's the IVA for this look like. Ah, basic stuff. Sort of a gloomy dawn here. Now oh, this this is a neat launch vehicle right now. This is a good looking launch. I think we should use this for many, many missions, perhaps to the moon as well. Though we don't need the dot stage for that, I don't think. Unless we want to use the dot stage to, uh, yeah, I guess, well, no, I don't think the dot stage is really necessary. It's a shame this Tal Command Pod doesn't have a good IVA yet. Because right now, I, I bet the view would be pretty good. Okay, and that's the end of that stage. First stage separation. Uh, FMRS, we don't really need you. Let's just make sure... Where did you go? Oh, don't freeze, don't freeze, don't freeze. Okay, uh... Oh, I, uh, no, I didn't want that at all. Uh, uh no, uh, just... Okay, I hope that's okay. Uh, <laughs> Alright, uh, yes, let's separate. Uh, we actually wanted to make sure FMRS was not doing it and I accidentally activated it. That's not good. Okay, uh, well, I think we'll go for lighting the second stage. And that's a fine orbit. Okay, so actually we've got quite a f bit of juice left in this stage before we even get to the dot stage. So we'll start out the transfer with this one. Let me plot the transfer to Duna now. Okay, I've got it at 375 kilometers with mid-course plane change. So 1,117 meters per second and at 12 meters per second mid-course plane change. And that's because we're still a little bit of off in terms of timing the phase angle is more than the 44 degrees that we want for for Duna but that's all right it's only a little bit more delta V and and on this part we've got uh, surplus okay uh, well actually so I, I think we only have downward facing lights on the module do we have internal lights copy lights Ah, good. Well, that's better than nothing. Okay, uh, we should probably look at this direction and start going. Okay, second stage set. And third stage ignition. Up, oh, it's going up again. All right. That's that. We've got a mid-course plane change, though it doesn't seem to bring me to the periapsis I wanted, so we need to replot that. Okay, replotted the mid-course plane change. It's going to take about 10 meters per second, says so 12, and get us uh, about the same, well, a little bit higher, but pretty cl close. So, uh, yep, Jed and Kerman is on his way to Duna as well, so we've done that. Let me restart the game and then launch the half moon just for safety's sake. All right, I'll also zip up the save to make sure nothing gets lost. All right, so we back with you with uh, half moon launch to Duna as well. Okay, the half moon is a fairly straightforward rocket, so I didn't think to go into the VAB to explain it. It's just a big fuel tank with some uh, RCS stuff and, of course, uh, little rockets to help it maneuver around and probably get into orbit around Mars. I mean, sorry, Duna. Uh, that would be ambitious. But anyway, I upgraded the rockets. It was using the smaller thrusters, the LV-1Rs, and instead I've got the Rocket Max 2477s. So there's that change, but otherwise everything else is still the same. And uh, so yeah, uh, one last launch for this episode. Let's go. I forgot to, I'm not going to, uh, and this is the old version. You see uh, the airbags have some somehow been resized. And uh, so yeah, 
uh, between uh, upgrades. And so these are odd little tiny airbags. Anyway, I'm not going to recover this. I should have just uh, dumped all that stuff. I just loaded up the file from the last time I launched this. Uh, I don't have enough time to try and attempt a recovery right now. I need to quickly finish this episode and, uh, and be underway. Besides, I, I don't have any uh, faith that I can recover these things right now. I want to... Uh, maybe an episode worth of testing in terms of recovering these uh, first stages might be in order. I think that would be a good way to spend our time, but obviously the next episode is going to be focused on getting all these missions into orbit safely around Duna. So that will be the next episode. Uh, perhaps some some launch tests after that to see if we can recover that stage or modify it some way. Maybe we need a new system, honestly. I mean, instead of these three stages, maybe something new could could be done. Something that is more reliably recoverable. Okay, first stage out. First stage set. Okay, second stage, ignition. Okay, you'll have to forgive me for not trying to uh, recover the first stage. I feel a little bit guilty about that, but we do have the funds, so I'm just going to go with that. And hopefully this base, I mean the station contract will get us a lot more funds. Oh, we've got a contract to land on Duna and transmit and recover scientific data from the surface of Duna. Maybe we will do that with the little uh, CRT. I sure hope I put some solar panels on here, did I? Well, I've got the always open ones. I guess I'll turn off the lights in transit to um, Duna just to be safe. Okay, well that stage is out just short of orbit. Set. And ignition. Uh-oh. Okay. Okay, that is fine and stable, and now I'm going to plot the transfer, and then, then we will have three different things on their way to Duna. Okay, pretty much the same sort of thing I did last time. I'm not going to go into it too much, just a, a slightly heftier than normal burn here at Kerbin, and then a very tiny mid-course plane change. And then we should be decently close to Duna. So here we go. Time so warping a little bit. Okay, third stage out. Got throttle down first. Third stage set. And now we are on the the fuel tank stage itself, the half moon. So any bit of fuel that we don't use here we can deliver safely to Duna, so try and minimize how much we use out of this. Probably this one will definitely be bra air braking around Duna to conserve fuel. Since it doesn't have any kerbals on, I'm not too worried if it uh, decides to explode in Duna's atmosphere because of overheating or anything like that. With the crewed missions, I'm a little bit worried, more worried about that. Well, wow, looks like the half moon will be arriving first at this rate. Okay, I'll take uh, 1,178 kilometers away from Duna from from the mid-course plane change. I'll leave it there, and then we'll 
we'll nudge in afterwards. 8.1 meters per second on that. And so the half moon it's on it is on its way. It's got it's got more than 20 tons worth of fuel here. And I I think we'll end up with about 20 tons once we get into orbit around Duna. I hope that will be the case. In which case we could probably do a few trips with the little rescue pod as a lander and uh, as an exploration lander for Duna and that would be a very good thing indeed. Alright, so uh, with that we've done quite a lot in this episode. I think it was a very satisfying episode and so we will continue on and I will we will see what happens around Duna in the next episode. Alright, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode please do press like. If you have any comments suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.